Let's take a moment and cover what's new in Enscape 2.7. This is Phil Reed. This is my personal email address. If you have any questions about this brief webinar, reach out. We have complimentary training, support, and even discounted quotes to purchase Enscape. The really interesting thing that happened in Enscape 2.6 is RTX support. It came out at the end of last year, and it allows for real-time ray tracing right through the graphic card. I have a Razer Blade Pro 15 laptop with an RTX 2080 graphics card. That's a graphic card by NVIDIA. It's a fantastic laptop and it allows me to render 10 to 12 images per minute at 2K resolution and even to render 30 seconds of animation in one minute. That's the kind of speed you'll get out of these gaming cards. If you're looking to get into VR, I'd recommend the Oculus Rift S. It's not very expensive. It's very portable. The quality is great. And overall, the ease of use is just fantastic. Now, since you're rendering through the graphic card in real time, I'd recommend RTX gaming cards over Quadro cards. So the RTX series 2080 RTX, 2080 Ti, and 2080 Titan are a great series of graphic cards. The big push in 2020 is recoverable workflow. Also look for RTX improvements, increasing the asset library, visual settings which save your visual styles per view, and even design feedback from your favorite BIM application. The asset library has been increased in 2.7 to contain about 200 new assets, and now there's over 1,400 assets, if you can believe that, inside of the Enscape library. Now let's start to talk about some of the very particular things that have been added in Enscape 2.7. First of all, visual settings. You can now save a visual style and apply that style to a particular view in your design tool. Here's what it looks like in Revit. There's two settings palettes, one for general and one for visual settings. Think of the general settings as sort of global settings and your visual settings are more your project settings. Let's open the panel and see what's available. The visual settings panel contains controls for real-time rendering, image quality, atmospheric qualities, and even your rendering information. All of these values can be saved in the project or saved from the project and shared. To do that, select the Presets tab, select Save Preset, and here you can save the preset to the project or to a file. Once you've saved your visual settings, you can associate them to any 3D view in your project. You do that by selecting this little chain link icon, click on it, and it opens up the ability to associate a visual setting to a particular view. Now, when you batch render, each of your view properties and the associated visual setting will be retained. Select Render Image. And this brings up the Batch Rendering panel, which allows you to select individual views by holding down the Control key, or select Favorites to render all of your favorited views, or select All Cab Views to render every view in the project. When you select Render, it will batch render all of those views with the respected view settings as well as the respective view properties. Next, let's talk about orthographic views. That's been added to Enscape 2.7 and it's really easy and it's really, really cool. There's two ways to get at orthographic views. I'm just gonna flick back over to Revit. And the first way is to open your visual settings panel, go to projection dropdown and select orthographic views. You'll see that the view now has an orthographic projection. There's actually another way to get at this setting. If you'll press your H key, it brings up the keyboard hints. You now have an option to turn on and off orthographic mode as a quick shortcut. See, really, really easy. And it's easy to get back to your orthographic mode. Now, when you're in this mode, notice at the lower right, you have the standard views. I'm on a computer without a number pad. And the way to bring up the Windows keyboard is to press the Windows and Control and O key simultaneously. The 5 key is your top view, and then 2, 4, 6, and 8 are your cardinal elevations. Now let's return to the perspective mode and go to the next topic. The next option is BIM data. Enscape now allows you to select categories of things or individual elements and see information about those components. To do this, we'll go back to Enscape, and you can see here at the bottom of the menu, it says B for BIM. 
simply press the B key and it opens a side panel. As you scroll over components in your BIM information panel, you'll see that they light up inside of your project. If you select something, it now gives you parameter information about your selection. You can also select elements by scrolling over the window and selecting a particular component. Again, this will show you information about that element. At the moment, there's nothing actionable that you can do once you've selected something other than to see the related BIM information. But I think we're going to see some exciting development in this area with Enscape this year. To close the BIM panel, simply select the B key again and your view is restored. Finally, the asset library. The asset library has been increased. It's now over 1400 assets inside of the Enscape asset library and there's no signs of slowing down. But there's something really exciting here that I'd like to show you right now. Let's go back to Revit and zoom into these two components. On the right, we have an Enscape asset, and on the left is a simple Revit task chair. We can also look at these components and plan. The Revit chair on the left is pretty simple geometrically. It's nice and clean, it schedules properly, and it's going to look great in plan and section and elevation. The Enscape asset is a little bit tessellated. It has a lot more detail, probably too much detail for a nice and clean document set. But let's look and see what they look like inside of Enscape. Inside of Enscape, the Revit chair obviously looks like a chair, but there's not much emotional quality to it, where the Enscape asset on the right looks absolutely fantastic. Enscape now allows you to have best of both worlds. You can link an Enscape asset to a Revit component. The Revit component shows up in Revit. The Enscape asset will show up in Enscape. It's really easy to do. Let's go back to Revit and I'll show you how. Here we are in the plan view. Let's open up the Enscape asset library. I'm going to select furniture and then we can even filter down to office chairs. Here's our chair in the project. If you'll notice when you hover over an Enscape asset, there's this little drop down menu to the lower right. Click on it. It allows you to place an asset on an active work plane or on a surface. This third option is fantastic. This allows you to link the Enscape asset to a Revit family component. We select this option and it's going to open a menu that allows you to search for that Revit family. I'm just going to type the word task because that's going to select task chair and then select OK. In Revit, nothing has changed. It looks pretty much the same, but here's what happens in Enscape. The Revit task chair is now replaced with an Enscape object. That allows you to keep the high fidelity, beautiful visuals that are very light inside of Enscape, but keep your Revit families nice and clean. Here's a couple of examples. This telephone looks wonderfully detailed inside of Enscape. It's actually a really simple Revit component. We can see it here on this table in the project. Very simple geometry, but it's been replaced by an Enscape asset inside of Enscape. The Enscape assets actually associate down to the type. In this example, there's actually two phones. Let's select the second example. The desk phone has now been replaced by a cordless phone. Very quick, very easy to do, and the results look great. Let's look at one more example. In this example, we have a simple Revit family component that's sufficient for documentation and coordination. There's an Enscape asset that looks like this guitar that's wonderfully detailed. How do we make that association? Well, we open up the Enscape asset library, and then we do a keyword search for guitar. Select the dropdown link the Revit family to that asset. We'll do the same keyword search over here. Select the instrument and select OK. This automatically makes the association between the Revit family and the Enscape asset. Close the Enscape library window and let's see what it looks like back in Enscape. And that's the highlights in Enscape 2.7. If you have any training questions or support issues, if you'd like a discounted quote to purchasing, please reach out. You have my personal email address. And finally, I've got about five years of tips and tricks articles on LinkedIn. There's my LinkedIn authors page. Just follow that link and you'll find lots of interesting uses of Enscape. I hope this was helpful. Everybody have a great day.